Hi, I'm Beth Rasmussen with the YMSL Pleasanton chapter interviewing Jill Gandera with Shepherd's Gate. Hey, Jill. Hi. So we wanted to ask you, what is Shepherd's Gate philanthropy and how did it get started? This is my favorite story. Um, so Shepherd's Gate, we're a nonprofit that serves homeless women and children. And we started uh, back in 1984. Our founder, her name was Alison Cantlo, and she was a park ranger at East Bay Parks in Hayward. And she would minister to the homeless in the park and just felt a call to do more um, than just talk with them and pray with them. So she started by opening up her own home. Now, Alison was single and close to retirement age when she got this call. So she realized it wasn't the safest thing for a single woman to be doing. So she went to a rescue mission to see how a shelter was run and she saw how many women and children were homeless and in need of help and just really felt God calling her to serve women and children. So that's why Shepherd's Gate's exclusively women and children from that experience. The population that we serve has experienced domestic violence or recovering from addiction or like I said, been trapped in generational cycles of poverty. Um, and a lot of the times it's any combination of those three. Um, so here at Shepherd's Gate, what kind of makes our program unique is that we don't have a time limit on how long they can stay with us. We understand what, whatever caused them to be homeless, um, you know, they may need to heal differently based on the situation that they've experienced. So, um, How do some of them get referred to Shepherd's Gate? Most women find us online, um, looking at our program and seeing everything that it has to offer. Um, and they're looking to get help. And then there's other women who have been referred by other agencies or by other residents. So one of my favorite stories is of a resident who was at the library, in the bathroom, changing her son's diaper, saw another woman there who was looking for resources that she could tell was homeless and was like, I am a part of this amazing program and your life can change. And that woman ended up coming into our program with her kids, so it was pretty cool. Well, we're excited as a YMSL chapter to help. What are some of the things some of the young men and members can expect to help when we come for our project? Well, we have some great projects that we've been waiting a long time to get done. So thank you so much for, for helping us with this. Uh, we've had some new fence that was recently installed. So we'll be staining that fence um, to preserve that wood and really get a, a longer life out of it. Um, all the areas that our women and children kind of frequent, the playground, the picnic area, coming in and out of buildings for their classes, uh, we'll just get a whole revamp. Um, so new mulch and um, just beautify the whole campus, which will be awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Jill. We are looking forward to working with you. When I first was a part of Shepherd's Gate, I would think of homelessness, um, you know, like the chronic homeless where you see them in tents or just kind of um, outside in front of Safeway um, asking for food or, or, or money to get food. Um, and then when I came to Shepherd's Gate, I realized that there's a hidden homeless. It's women who are living in their cars. Um, it's people who are bouncing from couch to couch, just trying to stay in, in a safe place and just how that can wear you down over time. Um, to where you feel defeated and that you can't get help um, and how that could be restored through the through this program Did you have one day in particular that really solidified your beliefs on why you're working here at Shepherd's Gate? Yeah, uh, well, I felt called to Shepherd's Gate um, and really sought out working here um, I started off working at our thrift store and then transitioned here to the Livermore campus and one of the first kids that I fell in love with here, um, she was just so beautiful. Her eyes are the exact same blue, um, big, round, beautiful eyes as my son. And I remember just looking down at her and just being so touched. Like, this is why God called me here. Um, to this day, she just still has my heart. I have her picture up in my office. And um, that, everything after that was for, you know, the women and children, groups coming in, um, to help and working with them, seeing all the progress and um, just knowing that it's really all for them, every, every piece of it. Hello, I'm here with Brittany McCarty, resident coordinator and supervisor at Shepherd's Gate. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to interview with us. Sure, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. 
Can you tell us a little bit about your story? What first led you to get to help and what led you to shut this gate? Yeah, so um, growing up, um, I played volleyball, played sports, and you know, was a really good kid, got good grades. Um, I partied a little bit in high school, and so, you know, unfortunately, I made some poor choices. Um, after high school, I did get introduced to prescription medication, and um, that was from an injury, a sports injury, actually. Um, and unfortunately, after that, I chose to continue taking them, and that led me to homelessness and just 10 years of chaos. What was it like to find a home here at Trippin' You know, it was amazing. From the moment I stepped foot on this campus, I felt loved and I felt safe, I felt peace. And um, for the first time I had, um, the first time in 10 years, I had complete stability. What does Shepherd's Gate do to prevent homelessness and provide new futures to residents? So Shepherd's Gate definitely focuses on the whole woman, um, not just one area of the life. So we focus on the spiritual aspects, the emotional, um, physical, and recovery. Um, also reuniting women with their children if um, they've lost their children. So um, throughout the program, women will do classes and you know live together and support each other through the program. What is it like working at Shepherd's Gate now, having gone through the program? It's amazing. It definitely doesn't feel like work. Um, every day that I come here, I feel that I'm at home. And, you know, my prayer is that at least one person can experience the freedom that I received here. Um, do you have a message that you would like to tell people to help under like their understanding of homelessness or clear up any misconceptions? Yeah, um, I definitely want to emphasize that choices are very powerful and that, you know, one decision can lead anybody to homelessness. Um, whether you're a male or a female, an adult or a child, um, you know, we have to choose our decisions wisely. And, um, you know, if we do make the wrong decisions, there are places like Shepherd's Gate and other places that are willing to help. Um, you just have to be willing to receive the help. Thank you so much. And do you have any closing comments to anybody who might be watching wanting to learn more about Shepherd's Gate? Yeah, I do. I feel like, you know, not too many people may know about places like Shepherd's Gate. I was one of them. So I stayed out there for a very long time. Um, I didn't know that there was places like this. So I pray that at least one person will hear this and know that there is a place where you can experience freedom and love and have a brand new life. Can you tell us a little bit more about what it means to be living um, in homelessness and how it might affect somebody? Yeah, so I lived out on the streets for about 10 years. Um, and when I say on the streets, I mean like from car to car, couch to couch, um, whoever was available, um, you know, let, would let me stay there temporarily. And in the end, um, it really led to me landing in jail. Um, the main things that I like to talk about when you're out on the streets is that you don't have a place to charge your phone, you don't have a place to take a shower, you don't have food every day, um, and if somebody gives you food, you have to eat it right away because you don't have anywhere to store it. Um, and these are things that I never once thought about um, as a teen or before I was living on the street because I always had things provided for me. So um, each day looked different and it was very scary, um, especially you know, being a woman by yourself. Um, I was scared to sleep anywhere. So, you know, there was a lot of sleepless nights and um, just a lot of days of um, being in place. What was it like for your first day here at Shepherd's Gate? So the first day I went into my room, um, the first thing I noticed is it was my own room. So I didn't have to share with anyone. There was a bathroom in the room and there was a beautiful quilt on the bed. There was a basket with hygiene products. There was a brand new Bible. Um, and there was just items that were just very welcoming. And I remember the first thing I did was take a shower. I, there, there was a robe on the bed, so I put the robe on and I just felt like a princess. Like, you know, you forget when um, you are so used to taking a shower every day and you're so used to just grabbing your products that you use every day, right? Um, that when you're out on the streets, people will steal them. You can't just lug all that stuff around with you. So you don't just have all the things that, you know, you may have in your cabinet, right? So I would say that um, just being able to walk downstairs and make a, a new meal, right? Was just the highlight of my day. Now being on this side of the helping hand, Shepherd's Gate provides, what sticks out to you the most? 
You know, when a new mom and child comes in, I definitely can relate to the pain that I see in their eyes. And I know um, what the struggle is just going to a new place, right? Even though it's a safe place, it's a different place. And so for me, when I leave and I go home to my husband and my kids, um, you know, I just sit and just, you know, take a moment to pray for them and, you know, continue to just try to think of ways that I can encourage them and let them know that no matter what, um, if they stick it out, God has a new plan for them and that they can be successful. They can have an amazing relationship with their kids and that each day when they get to hug their child and give them a kiss before they go to school, they're going to appreciate um, what Shepherd's Gate has to offer and just what life really has to offer for those who make good choices. Hi, I'm Beth Rasmussen, and I volunteer by myself. Michael is my son, he's a 12th grader. And I just wanted to ask you, when you first, after you first came in, did you have hope for a safer future for you and your family? I did. Um, instantly, from the moment I got here, I felt safe, which was different, you know, um, it's a different feeling that I had experienced in the past 10 years um, before coming to Shepherd's Gate. Um, but the biggest thing was I knew now that I was safe and around um, people that were doing good and mentors that were just amazing that I could do whatever I wanted. Yeah. And what do you want for the future now for you and your family? Is Shepherd's Gate giving you the hope that you need and the tools? Yes, yeah, so when I came to Shepherd's Gate, I didn't have any children. And so I went through this whole program as a single. And now I'm married. I have a 15-year-old stepdaughter who's a freshman. I have a two-and-a-half-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old. One um, the biggest thing for my stepdaughter is to bring awareness um, of her choices. And that one choice could literally lead to your um, death or homelessness. Um, and then also for my sons um, to know that no matter what choices they have, they can always talk to me, they can always be honest with me, and no matter what, I'm going to love all of them the same through anything they do. Um, but the biggest thing is just to know that um, before they make a permanent decision to like run it by a mentor or me, hopefully, or their dad, somebody that has been through it in the past. Can I have, I have one more question. How would you encourage a female that there is help out there and to encourage them to get the help, even if they don't think they need it? Yeah, that's huge. Um, I meet a lot of women actually in the community that are on the fence of, do I need a program? Do I not need a program? And, you know, I really try to share small parts of my testimony with them and let them know where I was and, and where I am now. The biggest thing of where I am now is the peace and the freedom that I feel every single day um, is amazing. And when I look into their eyes and I can literally feel the struggle and feel the pain, I let them know that that can go away. Like it is possible because I lived it and I'm living proof that, you know, a few small changes and dedication will change your whole life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.